I gotta say, Wizards is really knocking out of the park with these new pre-cons. At least they can do one thing right in Magic. Let's jump into the pre-cons of Magic's latest expansion, Commander Legends. Hello everyone, it's um, Marco again with another review for the Commander Legends pre-cons this time. Um, so we've got Commander Legends right on the horizon, gonna come out in um, about a couple weeks, maybe a week and a half by the time this video comes out. And man, these, these pre-cons just keep getting better and better. Um, and I have a lot of initial thoughts on these new pre-cons based off of AC Tyrant of Gyre Strait and Wyleth Soul of Steel. Um, these pre-cons are meant to be... They're, they're a new way of making pre-cons, essentially, and it's supposed to be very, very, very similar mm -hmm. to the Zendikar Rising ones. Um, so, uh, I have a lot of good things and a couple bad things about this. First off, uh, like I said in my last video, I was able to pick up both pre-cons for $25 Canadian each. Um, now, I was able to pick them up for $20 Canadian each, so they've gone down in price by $5 each, so I can literally now get both of them for less than the price of how much a pre-con was before. So, uh, their price going down is definitely a very good thing. Um, just makes it way better, really. Um, next though, um, people have been complaining about this new guy, AC Tyrant of Gyre Strait. Uh, here, let's read what he does. So, he's a... He's four green and blue for a 5-5 five, five legendary servant. He has... You may play additional land on each of your turns, and whenever a land enters back on your control, or basically landfall, you may draw a card. Now, if you played, especially if you played during Dominaria, this will probably sound familiar to you. It should sound like Tatiova Benthic Druid. Um, people don't like this card because it's extremely similar to Tatiova. When you compare the two cards, they just have slight variations, but they're practically the same card. Um, they've each got two advantages over the other. Uh, first of all, for Tatiova, her two advantages are that she costs one less to cast, overall just making her more efficient, and she also gains you life per land drop, which can be very valuable, um, over time, it can gain you lots of life. AC, his two advantages are that he's a 5-5 five, five instead of a 3-3. Three, three. Um, so, a 3-3 three, three probably will never go into combat, like, ever. But a 5-5 five, five could. So that's one thing going for AC. Another thing is that you can play additional lands. These cards are very, very similar. Um, but in my opinion, though, I'd say Tatiova's better. Simply because she's more efficient. Like, one less mana. I mean, in Commander, you're trying to find the most efficient spells. So that's why I'd say Tatiova's better. But, frankly, in this deck, I'd say you could just run either as a Commander and just have the other in the 99. They're pretty much the same. Um, AC, I don't think he's that as good. Because I don't really care whether the creature's bigger or smaller. And the additional land drop from AC isn't entirely super relevant. I mean, don't get me wrong. Additional land drops is very, very powerful, but, like, it's very powerful with Exploration on turn one, right? You can get plenty of additional land drops from Exploration, but on turn six with AC, like, when you cast AC on turn six, you probably won't have as many lands to play, so that just makes him, hit, that ability just isn't as good. Overall, though, I say they're pretty much the same card, and, um, just saying right now, you can honestly just ra use either as a commander of this deck. Like, personally, I'm going to take out a AC for my Omnath Locus cre of Creation deck. And probably, if I decide to keep this deck together, just use Tatiova as a commander. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's... Yeah, people really don't like AC because he she's just so similar to Tatiova. And, frankly, I agree. He's just not original. I'd rather a another guy who's completely different. 
Um, another thing is the fact that this is another land fall deck. Obviously, he draws you cards whenever land ETBs, so he's another land fall commander. For Zendikar Rising, we had a rogues deck and a land fall deck. This time, Wylath is like an aura slash equipment deck. I'll get more into that later. But we've got another land fall deck here with AC. So I don't really like that. Um, we just got a landfall deck. I'd rather a different theme deck. Like I'll admit, um, the last one was white, red, green, Naya landfall. This is blue, green, Simic landfall. So there's a pretty major difference in the colors. Like they obviously still have green, but one has white, red, the other one has blue. So there's some pretty big differences in that. But I'd rather they made a different deck. Maybe, um, in to go with Commander Legends, maybe like an Encore Commander deck, something like that. Not another Landfall deck, I don't know, it's just a bit bland. Um, but yeah, even though they're still each Landfall decks, they are still quite different in themes, which I'm going to get into actually right now. So, the first deck we'll be looking at is AC Tyrant of Gyre Strait. I already went over the card. So, after closer examination on this deck, it's actually not too much of a landfall deck. Basically what the deck wants to do is it has plenty of ramp cards and it has a ton of really big creatures here, most of these, which it can ramp into. And it just wants to ramp into super huge octopuses, leviathans, beasts. It's even got some dinosaurs in the deck. So yeah, but it's also got a couple landfall cards. Um, like for example, Rampaging Baloths big creature you can ramp into, but also has a very relevant landfall ability. Uh, so yeah. So now, into the cards. First off, Avenger of Zendikar. I'm, I'm, this card is really good. It's a great reprint. It's above $10, at least. In my LGS, I think the cheapest version of it is $11. But it's a very expensive card. Um, it did just get a reprinting in Double Masters, as you can see on the screen, Double Masters. Um, but it always, it's still very high in price. And I was honestly surprised to not see this in the Naya Landfall deck, but now I know why. Um, it's because they were saving it for this deck. So, super excited to see Avengers in the Carnage deck. Uh, most of these cards are just big beaters. Elder Deep Fiend, you know, big creature. Doesn't really make, make that much sense in a deck. Miloku the Clouded Mirror is definitely a very good card in this deck. Um, Tatiova doesn't allow you to play additional lands, but since AC does, this kind of works with it, because you can tap a mount, you can tap, say, an island, bounce that island to your hand, create a 1 1, play that island as your land for turn, tap it again, bounce it back to your hand, create another 1 1, then play it as your land for turn, and you essentially just got two free 1 1s, and you're still exactly where you left off. So Maloku, definitely a great card in this deck. Probably going to be underrated. Nezahal. This is, an, this is one of those dinosaurs I was talking about. Um, it's a great card. Good card to ramp into. Um, it's also, I'm pretty sure it's a bit expensive. I think it's like around a $5 range-ish. Um, so great reprint. And as you can see, it was printed in Rivals of Exon, but hasn't been reprinted since. So that was January 2018, has been reprinted for nearly three years now. So yeah, great reprint here. Um, it's a very, it's a bit more of a control -y card. Can't be countered, no maximum hand size. Whenever your opponent casts a non creature spell, draw a card. So um, debtors your opponents, or it, it disincentivizes them from casting non creature spells. And he also has protection by discarding three cards, which works well with this ability. Next up, Scourge of Fleets. Again, another big creature to ramp into. You can bounce a bunch of stuff. You got Shipbreaker Kraken. Yeah, I literally meant it when I said big Krakens and Leviathans. There are literally Leviathans and Krakens from uh, Theros. This guy is a pretty good card, honestly. It's not that bad. Um, but we're going to see a lot of cards like this as we go forward. Sphinx of Uthun. Or un un I don't know I don't know how to say that. Um, seven mana five six flying with factor fiction on it. I mean, just another big creature to ramp into. It's fine, I guess. 
Stormtide Leviathan. This is a bit of a weird inclusion, but I mean, you know, big st another big thing you can ramp into, so yeah, I guess it's fine in the deck. Tromo Kratis. Huh. Uh, 7 mana 8 8 has hexproof unless it's attacking or blocking, and it can't be blocked unless all creatures Venom Player controls it, blocks it. So basically, no creatures block this, or everything blocks it. A good creature to ramp into, and it makes it tough to block this. I mean, it has hexproof until it's attacking or blocking, so it's hard to get rid of with removal spells, and then even in combat, it's hard to kill the creatures because you're probably going to have to sacrifice a lot. I mean, if you got an army, and in that army you have a 1-1 death touch, if you want to block with that 1-1 death touch, you also have to sacrifice several other creatures. So yeah. Molimo Maro Sorcerer. Another big creature you can ramp into. Um, I don't think this card's very good. I think there's definitely way better cards that could be added to this deck instead. So I'd say probably switch this out. Rampaging Balots. A big creature you can ramp into. I mean, a 6 6 Trample, that's no joke. But also has a very, very relevant landfall that can get you a big army. Uh, Ramming Up Excavator. This is a very interesting card. Um, this card hasn't been reprinted since Our Devastation, which now is over three years ago. And it's now like a $10 card because it's got a very good ability. You may play... Oh, sorry. Uh, you may play land cards from your graveyard. This is an effect... This is exactly the same as Crucible of Worlds, which is like a $40, $30 card. So... Very, very happy to see you reprinting of it. And similar to Avengers of Zendikar, a very good reprint. Um, now, it's a very good reprint, but it doesn't synergize, like, at all with the deck. I mean, there's Blighted Woodland that can sack itself for to get more lands. Memorial to Genius, which can sacrifice itself. But that's, like, literally it. There's n this does not synergize at all to deck, but still a great card. Terracidon. This is a very good card to ramp into. 8 mana, 9-9. Nine, nine. And when it's battlefield, you practically just get 3 beast withins, but they can't blow up creatures. So, very good card to ramp into. I really like this card. Again, just got reprinting double masters, so it's very cheap right now. Um, but still a great card in the deck. Verdinson's Avatar is definitely a great include. It ha it's not that expensive right now, but it was cre creeping up in price. Like, when it was first printed, it was a bulk rare. Now it's around the $2 mark, so this will keep it in check. It's a 7 mana 5 5, and whenever it or another creature ends the battlefield under my control, or your control, you gain life equal to, to that creature's toughness. So, with all the big creatures coming into play, this can gain you a ton of life. Um, so, definitely a very good card. Fathom Mage. This will keep the cards flowing. 4 mana for a 1 1 with Evolve. And whenever a plus plus encounter is put on Fathom Age, you may draw a card. This card is very good in the deck. If you can play this early game and start spilling a ton of these super big beaters onto the battlefield, um, you can do a lot. Like, you can get a lot of cards off of this. Every time a plus plus encounter is put on it, draw a card. You play 2 2, draw a card. You play 3 3, draw a card. You play 4 4, draw a card. Like, this can draw you a ton of cards. On top of the cards that AC will be drawing you. Murphy and Leech. Um, this is a good card. It's a, a the Lord in the deck, but the Untap, I don't think that's very relevant in the deck. It's still a great card though, great reprint. Um, I'd probably just take this out from a, to add to the Keenan deck that I'm currently working on. But um, it's a great reprint, but it's similar to Ram and Apex Fair, where it doesn't really synergize well with the deck. Simic Sky Swallower, just classic 7 mana, 6-6 six, six flying trample shroud. Um, definitely a great card to ramp into. Big beater in the air, just classic. Um, now we've got, I think, the the not super big creatures. So you got Mull Drifter. Um, it's a great card in the deck. I mean, also just a great card in general. Um, it's pretty good in this deck, but 
basically 5 mana 2 2 flying, ETBs, you draw 2 cards, you can ev evoke it for 3 mana. So just a fine, you know, card draw spell. I like it, I'm a very big fan of it. Oh, we got one more big creature with Slinvolta the Rising Deep. This is a pretty great card in the deck. I mean, it's easy to ramp into this thing. And as an 8 mana 8 8, pretty bulk, I mean, not even trample. I maybe consider this card good if you didn't kick it, if it had trample, but with no trample, it's just bad. But if you can kick it, you return all creatures to their owner's hands, except for Merfolk, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. This works really well, because a lot of these big creatures are Krakens, Serpents, Leviathans, all that. But, you've also got Muldrifter, which you can bounce back to your hand and replay to draw two cards. And we got another, we got other cards that have relevant ETBs coming ahead. So, a great card in the deck. Six Slime, classic. Um, five mana, two, two, death touch. ETBs destroy an artifact at Chamber of the Land. Um, there's a, it's like, Slimbo can bounce that back to your hand, so great. Eternal Witness. This is a fantastic reprint. This is a six dollar card in my LGS, and it's like a commander staple. So this, um, reprinting of it will make it a lot more available and bring down its price. So I really like this reprint. I also don't own a copy, so this will be the first one I'm getting. So, really, really good. I'm super happy to see this. We've, we've, we've just been seeing a ton of good reprints in this, and we're like only a part way through the single deck. Rexage, I mean, it's just Rexage. Hopefully it has that art. I like this art a lot better than the last one. A uh, Spore Mound, nice car landfall card. Pretty great in the deck, honestly. Well, actually, now that I think about, maybe it's not the best in the deck, but still okay. Wickerbow Elder. Um, I don't know. This card isn't that great. Uh, mainly because we've already got Rex Sage and the Six Slime in the deck. It's okay. I mean, it's nothing special. It's pretty nice, I guess. You have my Elder. This card isn't good in most decks. But in this deck, it could be especially good because AC allows you to play additional lands. So those lands going into your hand could potentially immediately go onto the battlefield. One is your land for turn, one is the additional land drop. So it's, it's a fine card, pretty nice. Coiling Oracle. Um, like I said, you want to ramp these big guys. This is potentially a ramp spell. Nice in the deck. Sharkdo Crab. I don't think it's big enough to be considered, like, a big creature. Um, like, all the other cards in this deck. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of this card. I think just the other creatures in this deck are just much more impactful. This one, not so much. And Meteor Golem. This is the last creature in the deck. Um, I think it's pretty nice in the deck. With all the ramp, 7 mana is gonna be, like, 3 mana in this deck. Right? <laughs> And it can blow up any non-land permanent. Pretty nice. So we got 28 creatures. Sorcerers, we have 10. First, we got Whelming Wave. Um, like I said before, with Slinvoda, this is basically that effect, but at a much cheaper cost. Um, this is probably like... Probably like... Um, Cyclonic Rift. In this deck, has Sorcery Speed. I mean... It, all your big creatures are Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. Um, and all the ones that aren't are cards like Rickerbill Elder, Rex Sage, Eternal Witness, Acidic Slime, Muldrifter. So you don't really care about bouncing us to your hand. Spitting Image. At first, this card doesn't look like it's anything special. But actually, upon closer examination, this card's really good in the deck. Six mana, not a problem in a ramp deck. Creating a token of a copy, or create a token as a copy of target creature. That can target your opponent's creatures, but it can also copy the super big beaters in your deck. So it can make some really good copies. And the retrace is not that bad either, because there's a lot of card draw in this deck, a lot of lands in the deck, and it'll, it'll probably be very easy to retrace it. So it's actually very good. Uh, compulsive research. Eh, I don't really like it that much. I hate those cards where it's like, you've got an artifact deck, so the adder card says, discard two cards unless you discard an artifact card. 
Don't really see the same thing here. I don't like it that much. I mean, this is a landfall deck. Why do you want to discard a land? It's just weird. I don't... I'd probably just take this out for a um, divination or something like that. Now, here we got some very good ramp. Cultivate. It's been seeing a lot of reprints lately. So, nothing special, but still a great card. Explore. Um, really just the the um, package of Explore, Urban Evolution, and Growth Spiral up here. All these cards that put additional lands into play are just great in this deck. Harmonize, card draw spell, probably going to be fine in the deck. Just good card in general. Kodama's Reach is a big deal. It's a pretty expensive card, and I'm glad to see, to see it have another reprint. And as you can see, this is the Commander Zendikar Rising um, expansion symbol. So I'm very, very glad that they're continuing to reprint it. And probably one of the best cards that they're reprinting is Rampant Growth. They, like, never reprint Rampant Growth. Literally never, especially in pre-cons. So I'm so happy to finally see a Rampant Growth in pre-cons. I've also run out of copies, but it's not entirely biased. This is a great card. A Surge for Tomorrow. I, yeah, this is definitely an underrated commander card. Um, I, I think it's definitely underrated. I mean, if you play turn one, you can have four untapped lands on turn three. That's definitely a pretty good, big deal. So, great card. And Urban Evolution, we already talked about. Um, instance, you got eight. The two big deals in this section are Arcane Denial and Counterspell. These are definitely two of Commander's best Counterspells on a budget, obviously. I mean, Mana Drain, um, Force of Will, those cards, like, they're way out of budget. But these are like dollar two cards. So I'm finally glad to see them in, re in um, pre-cons, because they're, they're never printed in pre-cons. So I'm very glad to see these here. Factor Fiction, seeing a second appearance in these um, pre-cons after being in Zendikar Rising pre-cons, so it's just a great card. Into the Royal, I find a bit weird in this deck. Um, it was just reprinted in Zendikar Rising, and it just, it's not particularly good in the deck. Like, it's a fine card, but not particularly good. I think it would have been made, made more sense for them to reprint these in the rogues deck because it's more on theme. It's still a fine card though. Peel from Re Reality. At first glance, this looks pretty terrible. I mean, why would you want to bounce your seven mana Leviathan back to your hand just to have to recast? That's dumb. But actually, we have this little section here of cards with relevant ETVs. Moldrifter, a six Slime, Eternal Witness, Rex Age, Wicker Bow Elder, Coiling Oracle, even Meteor Golem. All very good cards with ETBs, and for the most part, are somewhat cheap. So, it's actually a lot better in a deck. I mean, you can bounce your opponent's creature, and bounce your Eternal Witness, and get another card back. So, it's definitely nice. Beast Within. I'm so, so happy to see this here. It's just, it's such a good removal spell, and almost never is printed in pre-cons, similar to Rampant Growth. I also don't own a copy of this. I don't own any magic cards, clearly. Such a good card. Growth Spell, we already talked about. Simic Charm. None of the modes are particularly useful in this deck. The Hex Proof, I guess, is pretty nice, because it's like protection for your big creatures, but I like to add charms to all my decks. I think the charms are very good cards. Like, for, like for my Geisha deck, I add Naya Charm. For my um, Brokos deck, I add Sultai Charm. For my Feather deck, I run Boros Charm. So I just like the charms a lot, and I think it's definitely a nice card. Artifacts, we only have four. Seer Sundial's up first. Um, I, I don't like this card a lot. It's a fine card. I mean, by all means, if you like it, keep it. But it's a good card in the deck too, but I just don't like it. Um, it requires so much mana and investment to draw cards. Like, think about it. The first card you draw will cost you a total of six mana. Two cards, that's eight mana. Three cards, that's ten mana. 
a full grip of 7 cards will cost you a total of 18 mana. So yeah, it's really expensive, I'm just not a big fan of it. Next we've got Simic Signet and Soul Ring. Soul Ring was a given. Simic Signet though, I'm really happy to see here. Um, it's a very good piece of ramp. It doesn't get printed nearly as often as it should be. And it's just a great card, I'm glad to see it here. Um, now you might be wondering, where's the Arcane Signet? Because we're kind of taking it as like a, um, a guaranteed almost now. Like we've seen it, first came in the Brawl Precons. Then we had in the Ikoria Precons. Then we had in the Zendikar Precons. So we almost expect to see it now. But I guess I'm not reprinting it. I'm a bit disappointed, but um, that's just how it is. At least they replaced it with Simic Signet. Like, if they just had Soul Ring, that's it. Would have been a bit disappointing, but yeah. And we have Swiftwood Boots. It's a good card in general, especially in this deck, because I mean, you can give your, the Swiftwood Boots to your Avenger of Zendikar, and well, good luck with that opponent. There's only three enchantments Ira Rune Expedition. I guess it's a fine card draw spell, but I, I think people overestimate estimate this card. They think, oh, it has landfall, so therefore it must be in a landfall deck. But I mean, it's a divination that is one less mana, but you can't use it right away. Like, I mean, because it's not like only landfall decks will be able to use this. Like, if I play this in any blue deck, I can basically just cast this, or cash it in three turns later. So, yeah. Colony Heart Expedition, fine ramp spell, pretty great overall. I, I like to run in landfall decks. Good card. Retreat to Kazandu. Um, I guess it's fine. You can pump your guys, but it's not super great. So that's the deck. Next, um, actually, I have to talk about the lands here. Um, so in my last video, I complained that there was a lack of lands. The landfall deck only had 37 lands, and the rogues deck had 38. So I was really disappointed in the number of lands in the deck, and in particular, the fact that it had less lands than the rogues deck, one less land. And wizards might have actually heard me, because now we have 44 lands in the landfall deck, and even in this white-red or an equipment deck, we have 40 lands. So, they've had a ton of lands. Um... Yeah, 44 lands is a lot. Like, when I said they should add more lands, I was thinking, you know, 37 to 40. That's pretty reasonable, right? But 44 is a lot. Um, like in my Omnath Focus of Creation deck, I run 41 lands. Now I'm starting to think that that might be too little. Right? Like, this is a lot. Um, so, the mana base, it's not that good, actually. I think it's worse than the last one. Blade Woodland is a good card. Command Tower is a good card. Now, I think Wizards might have thought that Bounce Lands would be so good in this deck. In fact, so good that they should run not just Cynic Growth, Growth Chamber, but also Coral Atoll and Jungle Basin. So, yeah, you got a lot of Bounce Lands in this deck. Um, frankly, I didn't even know that these existed. So I think them getting a reprint is pretty nice. Then you got, you know, Evolving Wilds, Simic Gilgate, Terramorphic Expanse, Stormwood Falls, Woodland Stream, what you'd expect to see in pre-cons. Next we have the Vivid Lands. Um, overall as a reprint, they're pretty great. Um, I think some of them are pretty expensive. So, and they're great cards too. In the deck though, these are basically just worse dual lands. So, yeah, a bit weird, but still. We've also got Memorial to Genius here, which I guess it's okay, but I don't like it. I mean, it's a nice card, but I think there's just running way too many Bounce Lands in this deck. Or sorry, not Bounce Lands. Tap Lands in this deck that they, I don't think they need a Memorial to Genius. So, yeah. Um, and lastly, probably the best land in the deck, Reliquary Tower. This is a solid $3 land, and it's just a great land because it gives, you know, maximum hand size. So, pretty great. Uh, so yeah. 
best of slam fall deck. Uh, overall impression, I really like this deck. It seems really good. And I really like how they made it a different theme than the last slam fall deck. And this is actually my favorite deck of the two. Next, on to Wyleth, Soul of Steel. So this guy is white, red, and one generic for a legendary human warrior. He's a 2-2 with trample, and whenever he attacks, you draw a card for each aura and equipment attached to it. So this deck um, really wants to get a ton of auras and equipments onto Wyleth to draw lots of cards. Um, but after looking at the deck, I it's not entirely tuned in and focused. This deck has... Like, it has a lot of, you know, ores and equipments, but it also has some cards that don't really complement each other. And there's even some cards that are just completely random. In fact, our first creature here, Audric Lunar Commercial, is a good is a good example of that. It's a 4-man 3-3, and it says, at the beginning of each combat, creatures you control gain first strike until I'm turn if a creature you control is first strike. The same is true for flying, death touch, double strike, a bunch of other abilities. This card complements a go wise strategy but as you can see this guy looks like he wants to just get one big creature and between 11 creatures in the deck and not that many token generators it just doesn't make any sense in a deck so yeah this card is a nice card but kind of dumb in the deck next we've got relic seeker this is a good card i don't think it's been printed or reprinted once and it's pretty fantastic in the deck. Um, when it, you can, it has Renown 1, and whenever it becomes Renowned, you can tutor for any equipment and put it into your hand. So, turn 3. Potentially turn 3, you could be getting your best equipment out of your deck. Whether that's Swiftfoot Boots, Fire Shrieker, there's a ton of choices here. So Relic Seeker is a great card in this deck. SRAM is definitely one of the better reprints in this specific deck. Um... It was first printed in Aether Revolt, and has been reprinted since. And Aether Revolt came out almost four years ago. So yeah, it's like a $6 card, but this reprinting will definitely bring it down a lot. At least to $3, probably lower. It's a great card. Um, it turns all your ores and equipments into cantrips, which is really good. Because now, you play an aura, you draw a card off SRAM. Then you attack with Wyleth, you draw a card off Wyleth. Each card is now going to net you two more. So really, really good. Dualcaster Mage, at first glance, seems like a weird card in the deck. But then you realize that there are 21 instants in the deck. So, um, yeah, it's actually pretty good in the deck. Danitha, Cash, and Paragon. Just, a, I, like, I like to call them Aura and Equipment Coupon. Makes them all cost one, one less to cast, which can be pretty significant. Yeah, fine card. And also, it doesn't hurt that it's a First Strike Vigilance Lifelinker, so you might want to put it on her, too. Flicker Wisp, like Audric, it's kind of random in this deck. There's not really much use for that blink. Um, I mean, there's no ETBs, so it's really weird. Ironclad Slayer, a fine card, can bring back an aura equipment. Definitely nice. Oh man, we're already back here. Core Cartographer sucks. Take it out. Add any other ramp spell. Literally, there is no mana rock that can be worse than Core Cartographer. Like this is four mana and gets you one land. There's no mana rock that get that's four mana and only gives you one mana. This thing sucks. Just take it out. Uh, I just. I have no more words for this guy. Oresco's Explorer. 2 mana 2-2, two, two, when it's battlefield, search your library for up to X planes cards, where X the number of players you control who who control more lands than you. Reveal those cards, put them into your hand, and shuffle your library. Um this is a nice budget version of land tax, I guess. Fine card. Um in a white red deck, especially, this could really be useful. And this deck has 14 planes in it, so definitely won't run out of planes. Tiana Ship's Caretaker. 
this is a pretty great counter deck. It can just keep those ord equipment just keep flowing. Like if you suit up a creature, it dies, you can get these back, and if you have SRAM in the battlefield, like you can just get a lot of advantage. And last creature is Brass Squire. Um, not entirely useless in a deck. We've got a couple equipment with some very expensive equip costs. Uh, Hero's Blade is equip 4, Luxon Warhammer 3, so this could be def definitely be useful in deck. We've only got 5 sources in the deck, but there are definitely some haymakers. We've got 2 board wipes in the form of Marshall Coop and Winds of Wrath. Uh, Marshall Coop, it's a solid like $2 card right now, and it's a fine board wipe. You can either pay 7 mana or more, wipe the board, and leave with you a ton of soldiers to, um, to give you a board presence, or you can use this as a really, really bad token generator. So I like it. It's a good card. Very, quite flexible. Um, Winds of Wrath is definitely the better card, because um, there are definitely quite a few ores in this deck, so... This could definitely just be a one-sided Wrath in this deck. Fine card, and I mean, compared to Wrath of God, it's a lot cheaper, only costs one extra mana, and can be a bo one side board wipe in this deck. So very good in the deck. I think this should just be in like any um, aura deck. Next we've got Jaya's Immolating Inferno. I mean, it's a white-red deck. Like, Jaya's Inmaling Infer Inferno and, like, again, I'm going to bring out my Omnath Oaks of, of Creation deck. That would be pretty good. Like, just dealing a ton of damage to everything. But in this deck, I mean, we got 40 lands, a couple ramp spells, but not really much. So, yeah, this card is not that great in the deck. Then we've got Relentless Assault and Response Resurgence as two additional combat step cards. Um, Berlin Assault is very basic. Four mana, you get another combat step. Um, it's a nice card, but again, this de that this deck definitely does not want to go with a go wide strategy. But I mean, it could still be useful just for one creature, even. Like if you've got Wyleth as an eleven eleven creature, and you play this, you could take someone out. So. With commander damage, of course. So, pretty nice. Response Resurgence. The Resurgence side... Oh. The Resurgence side is one extra mana and gives First Strike and Life and Vigilance as additional upsides. So, it's pretty nice. But, Response is also a very good half of this card. Where it can be both removal or extra combat step. So, definitely very good. I like this card quite a bit. Now, this deck is a bit, like when I said it wasn't focused, it's because of all these instants really. It has a ton of instants and um, not as many, like artifacts and enchantments combined is only 20, but there's 21 instants. So yeah, well let's go through them. Comet Storm is up first. Um, it's a nice card, but again, Trying to dump all that mana into it won't be that easy in the deck. I just, it's a fine card, but I don't know. Unbreakable Formation. It's a pretty nice way to, to protect your commander and any other creatures you control. Nice reprint too. So I actually kind of like this card in the deck. White Sun's Zenith. I have no idea why there are a ton of mana sinks in this deck because I really do not see how you're going to get all this mana. So, I don't know about this card. Wild Ricochet is a pretty interesting card. Could be protection and can also copy any of these instants in the deck. Oh, sorry about that. Oh man, sorry. Um. So, Wild Ricochet, yeah, it's a nice card, I guess. Has some utility in the deck for sure. Word of Seizing. This is one of the weirdest inclusions. It's basically a act of treason for more mana, but at a split second. This is just super random. 
I could see this in like a sacrifice deck because you can steal your opponent's creature. Yes, for a bit of extra mana, but they can't interrupt it. Um, but it's just really random in this deck. I have no idea what's going on with this thing. Deflecting Palm. Yeah, there's these we there's these defensive cards with Wild Ricochet and Deflecting Palm. It's a fine card. I'm definitely interested in taking this for my Queen Rochessa deck, but yeah, it has this one also hasn't been reprinted though, so it's gonna be nice to get reprinting, but yeah. Um Master Warcraft. I definitely like this card. Even in this deck, I think it's actually good. Because it has some really good utility. You can either use this to manipulate your opponent's combat, like, say you have Billy, who has a giant army of creatures, and he's looking to just kill everyone this turn. You can play this card and make Billy attack Bob and Joe with all of his creatures and just eliminate those two guys, because you can also choose for them not to block. And then they're tapped out, and then you can swing at them. Or, as some extra utility, you can use this to make sure that your creature guaranteed gets through for the commander damage or whatever. So actually a good card. Also doesn't get reprinted that often. Condemn. I complained last time because it's like a worse source of plowshares, but we actually have an interesting surprise with source of plowshares also being in the deck. I'm super happy to see source of plowshares in this deck. Fantastic card. It's always out of stock at, at my LGS. I only own one, and it's an old damaged one, so I'm super happy to see Source of Plowshares here. But Condemn, I don't know, it's just fine. Dawn Charm, like I said, charms are very, very versatile, and that's no exception with Dawn Charm. This can be very, very um, good in this deck. We got a pretty weird inclusion just disenchant that's right that limited common you played in your draft last weekend i mean eh it's not premium removal so yeah but speaking of premium removal we got this section here generous gift return to dust and source of power shares <coughs> oh sorry my throat my throat's getting a bit sore um generous gift it's a very good card. It's only been printed once in Modern Horizons. It's like around three dollars. I'm glad to see it getting a reprint here. And it's a great card. I don't own any. I've been trying to get a hold of one. This would be a good way to get one. Um, Return to Dust is also a pretty great removal spell. Four mana, and you can get rid of two artifacts and enchantments into exile. Great card. Um, it doesn't. It's getting. Well, it's not that expensive currently, but still nice to see here. And Source of Pasha, as I already talked about. Valor's Stance is definitely a good card. It can protect Wyleth, or can act as a removal spell. I really like this card. A Braid. This is weird. This was like a standard staple, but frankly, 3 damage in Commander is just nothing. This card's pretty weird in the deck, and we don't need this when we already have Return to Dust, Disenchant, like, we already got some artifact removal spells, so, yeah. Expedite is... At first, when I saw this, I just thought, like, what is this doing in the deck? It's not that good. But, um, it could potentially give Wildlife Trample, or sorry, not Trample, Haste, to be able to attack immediately and get in for a lot of command damage. So it could be good in a deck. Uh, Fists of Flame. I think they added this mainly because you can swing with Wyleth, draw like five cards or whatever, then play this and immensely pump him. So it's sneakily good in a deck, actually. Timor Battle Rage. Man, these last instants have really been reminding me of my Feather Commander deck. Wow. Teamer Battle Rage can just come out of nowhere and probably just kill your opponent. So, sneakily a good card in this deck. But I think I would rather them add equipments or auras in the deck that give double strike instead. But yeah. 
Volcanic Fallout. I mean, it's not that good of a card. It could really punish token players, so... I guess it's okay in the deck. Not that bad. Boros Charm is a very good reprint. Um, I think it's like around 5 or $6. And it's also great in the deck. Being able to give Devil Strike, giving your permanent indestructible, doing 4 damage to player Planeswalker. All of those modes could be relevant. Um, protection, oops, Double Strike, or that last little bit of damage to take out opponents. So great counter deck. Wear and Tear, our last piece of premium removal. This is a great card. It can get rid of artifact and enchantment for a low 3 mana. Or either if you don't want to get rid of 2. So it's a very good, good card. I'm glad to see it getting emphasized here. Finally, because it hasn't been printed like or reprinted ever. So yeah. So that's 21 instants. Almost as much creatures as the last deck has. Next we finally move on to hopefully the meat of this with the equipments and auras. First off, probably one of the best equipments is Blackblade Reforged. I really like this card. Um I mean you might be thinking like you probably won't be getting a ton of lands with this deck so it won't get that big of a boost but my response is yeah it will you have even just five lands it gets plus five plus five who said that's not good it's like this is very good and equip legendary creature not only is wyleth legendary but we also have audric which you could potentially suit up sram danitha um, Tiana, so there's even some other cards that could potentially suit up, so, definitely a good card. Um, Luxon and Warhammer is just a good equipment. I mean, 3 mana to play, 3 mana to equip is quite a lot, but plus 3 plus so, Trample and Lifelink are very, very good. So definitely nice equipment, especially in a deck like this. Sunforger is a pretty great reprint. It used to be expensive, but as you can see, it just got a reprint in Double Masters. So, it's not that expensive anymore. It's still a great card. And this ability especially is great. Because you can tutor up any of these instants. I mean, you can tutor up a wear and tear to destroy your opponent's stuff. A generous gift to blow up any permanent. A dawn charm to fog if you really need to. Boros charm to protect your stuff. Or give double strike. So yeah, Sunforger, very, very good in this deck. Sword of Vengeance is very similar to Luxon Warhammer. It gives plus two plus zero instead of plus three plus zero, but it also gives first strike and haste. So pretty much very, very similar to Luxon Warhammer. Bone Slitter, just a very cheap equipment. Um, plus two plus zero is also pretty nice, but I think cheap equipment are good in this deck, because it's like you equip for one, and then you draw a card, cantrip for one mana, so definitely nice. Boros Signet, we just saw Simic Signet, now we're seeing Boros Signet. Very, like a lot how they're, I like a lot how they're um, reprinting these Signets. Explore Scope, I mean it's an okay card, but not really that great, honestly, I mean... You don't really want to ramp that much with this deck. I don't know. It's just okay. Fire Shrieker. This is a very good card. Three mana. Equip your creatures. Double strike. Equip for two. Very, very, very good. Um, not only is it good in this deck, but it is also good in a wide variety of other decks too. Like for me. I'm very excited to add this to my Geeshaf and Brokos deck. So, very, very good. Haunted Cloak. Um, three mana, equip creatures, Vigilance, Trample, and Haste, equip for one. Um, it's a fine card. You can play this, and then play Wyleth, equip this, and give Haste, plus Vigilance and Trample. So I guess it's nice. Not particularly good, but still nice. Hero's Blade. This card is pretty situational, but plus two plus two is a pretty big bonus. 
you need to play this before Y left, because if you play this after, it's it becomes a lot worse. Because then you need to pay four mana to equip. So yeah. Uh, Mask of Avacyn. It's essentially their budget version of protection in this deck. I mean, I'm just gonna say right now, they have Swift of Boots in the deck, but Mask of Avacyn, they still need in the deck. It's a good card, I guess, but really expensive. I'm just glad they're adding some kind of protection, so that's nice. Ring of Thune and Ring of Valkas give Trample, or sorry, Vigilance and Haste, and can give a count every turn. They're fine equipment, but I don't think you want to play the long game and wait to amass a lot of counters. So, I don't know. They're fine, but not particularly good. And then you've got Soul Ring, because Soul Ring, and Swift of Boots, because it's especially good in this deck, because this deck complements equipments. This can also draw you cards in this deck. Enchantments. This is more of an equipment deck instead of auras. You've only got four no auras and one enchantment. The cigar is eight. Very good at enchantment though. I'm pretty sure it was definitely getting up there in price. And now we're gonna see a reprint of it. And it's very, very good. For just one white mana, you can play your aura and equipments at instant speed and immediately attach your equipments to your creatures. This can be amazing. Now, Hero's Blade always goes on for free. Haunted, or sorry, Fire Streaker can always go on for free. Sword of Vengeance always goes on for free. Lux and Warhammer always goes on for free. So, great card. Um, Faith Unbroken is the removal spell that really goes well with this deck. It's removal on an aura, which is what this deck wants. For 4 mana, you exile creature and controls until it leaves the battlefield, and you give the enchanted creature plus plus 2. Fine card. There's a lot of removal in this deck, but this one synergizes well with the deck, which I like. On Sarah's Wings is a very good card in my opinion. Making Chan Creature legendary is not entirely useless, because you've got stuff like Black Blade Reforged, which is which will just be cheaper to cause like if I put On Sarah's Wings onto Relic Seeker maybe then Black Blade or Forge will only cost three. So, yeah, and plus one plus one, Flying Vigilance and Lifelink, all those keywords are definitely good to have. The plus one plus one, not as significant, but still nice. Good card. Then we've got two, um, kind of protection slash evasive spells with Spear Mantle and Unquestioned Authority. Spear Mantle is two mana, Gives enchant, enchant creature, plus plus one, and protection from creatures. This can be very good in attack, actually. I actually really like both of these spells. Protection from creatures means that they can block creatures without any fears, and can swing and be unblockable. So very good cards. I like Unquestioned Authority more. It's one extra mana, and doesn't give plus plus one. But it does draw you that card, which I think is better. Now... Lands, we have 40 in the deck. And this one doesn't really have that much better of a mana base. Slayer's Stronghold is one of the highlights of the mana base. It's a nice land. Don't know how much it costs, but it seems nice. And the ability is definitely not entirely irrelevant. This deck is... This card... This deck is definitely more combat focused. So plus plus so is definitely not irrelevant. Then you've got what you'd expect. Boros Garrison, Bounds Land, Boros Skillgate, Command Tower, obviously. Encroaching Waste. This card, eh, I mean, it's not that good of a card. That's a lot of mana to have to pay to blow up a non-basic land. It's just, eh, but, yeah. Evolving Wilds. You got the Cycle Land, or at least one of them at least. Or, no, you got both. Seclude Steppe and Forgone Cave. I mean, this deck likes to draw cards, so they're definitely not that bad. Memorial War, going with the Memorials again. This one's even worse than the Memorial to um, Knowledge, or whatever it was. Um, this one just blows up lands instead, which is definitely a lot worse. 
um, then draw, being able to draw two cards. And again, a lot of tap lands in this deck, so yeah. Myriad Landscape is in this deck, but actually, was Myriad Landscape in this deck? No, you don't even have Myriad Landscape in this deck. So, Myriad Landscape is definitely good in this deck, but I'm, I'm confused why it wasn't in the other deck. But yeah, still a good card. Rogue's Passage. We're seeing this in two sets of pre-cons now. It was also in the Rogue deck. Very playable there. Um, definitely very relevant, being able to make Wyleth unblockable. Now we've got, well, we've got Stone Quarry here, uh, Tamworth Expanse, and Windscarred Crag. But now we've got Rupture Spire and Transguild Promenade. These are terrible cards in these decks. I, like, with these cards, I would want to add these to a deck of at least three colors. But in two colors, similar to Vivid Lands, they're just strictly worse dual lands. So, they're okay, but not that good, especially in this deck. Um, then we've got the last card, actually. Sunhome Fortress of the Legion. Good card. I think it's great in this deck. Yeah, just pretty nice. Oh yeah, and there's also these two cards, by the way. One's an aura, one's an equipment. And up here, we've got two creatures. One's landfall, the other one puts counters on commanders. So, I forgot to mention those, but... So yeah, um, this deck looks definitely very good. But um, I feel like it's not super focused on specifically equipments and auras. There's a lot of instants with like, you know, Expedite, Fist of Flames, uh, Team of Battle Rage is like, um, combat tricks, so, yeah. I definitely don't think it's as good as the other deck, but it's still a good deck. So, overall, I say these two are definitely worth picking up. I say pick up each of these. They're still super good. Um, they're at least as good, if not better, than the other pre-cons, especially with the price reduction. So, um, yeah, I hope I've given you a lot to think about, and um, if you liked the video, uh, leave a like, and you can consider subscribing too, and see you next time.